So, a few weeks ago, I discussed the 1999 Microsoft Home of the future, and it was something. But this home wasn't a one and done. Well, it, it was one, uh, there's only one of them, but it wasn't done. They kept improving it over time to reflect the new vision of the home of the future. Yes, Microsoft kept this place located in some building somewhere. No, it wasn't actually a home, but it would go on for decades as a test ground for Microsoft projects. And if the 1999 version was slightly wacky, albeit a mostly accurate prediction of the future, the home would slowly morph into something entirely separate from reality. So today I want to look at a 2005 segment from The Gadget Show that covers the next evolution in our greatest house in the world. Immediately, things look different. The home is no longer open via eye scanner and fingerprints. Instead of fingerprints, you now need the whole hand, which kind of seems like a downgrade, but it looks cool, so whatever. Our host, Susie, enters the home and utters a truly dystopian phrase. Hi, house. I'm home. And this sets the mood of the lighting and whatever. Kind of. See, when you arrive home now, the lights still turn on, but sensors outside detect the level of daylight and adjust the inside lights accordingly. Which sounds pointless, kind of, right? Right as we're just about to get into the meat of this home, it's revealed that the old home center console air conditioning unit is back, and it's better than ever. For whatever reason, in the span of six years, this home console went from a laughably outdated air conditioning unit into Tron Legacy. Yeah, the walls in this home function as screens, like touch screens with the OLEDs. And for 2005, that's pretty forward thinking, but maybe a, a bit too forward. The TV turns on via voice command, which, you know, yeah, could see that one coming. Xbox on. But this TV is different than the old 90s one. It's all controlled via your PC. So the idea is that in this universe, your computer functions as a storage system for everything. When you want to watch a show, listen to music, whatever, your computer streams that to the TV. Now, this all happened, actually, but it required a PC, an Xbox 360, and your ability to care about this feature. In a world without streaming Hulu or Netflix or Spotify, I think this concept would be fairly interesting. But what really gets me is this logo right here. That's Halo 5 in 2005, 10 years before Halo 5 actually launched. Of course, this is just a joke from whoever made the, you know, UI, but as a kid, I thought it this was the coolest thing ever. The rest of the television is fairly expected, but it's a good prediction. Smart TVs do exist, along with many other devices that can function in the same manner. Only difference is, I guess you can control the temperature from here as well as over there. If, are people changing the temperature that much in this world? What gets me is these profile pictures for your profile, and for some some reason in the Microsoft home of the future, they used an Espeon plush as somebody's picture. Like, the logistics of having a Pokemon plush as a Microsoft profile pic in 2005 is just, it's magical. Microsoft believe that in the future we will still be loving our bits of paper and our memorabilia and postcards. However, the family bulletin board may be made of intelligent fabric like this a digital bulletin board. The digital bulletin board. <laughs> and yeah, uh, it's a giant OLED display, but it's not, and it has touch sensors, and it incorporates real-life photos and objects into itself. The idea is that if you get an invitation to something, you can put it up there, and it organizes your calendar. So, a party invitation will come with its own electronic tagging, which will not only let you reply directly, but will also let you know how many other people are going and remind you about other things you need to arrange. They use RFIDs, or Radio Frequency ID chips. Get used to the terminology, you're going to be hearing a lot about them. It never happened. 
Next, we're on to the kitchen. So the idea here is that if you wanna cook something, you can scan the barcode into the microwave and it will simply cook it the correct amount of time. It just knows. Now this seems odd to me because I mean, somebody somewhere would have to categorize each frozen food item ever made and then transmit the data of how long it needs to be cooked to the smart microwaves. And you know, that, that sounds like a lot of time. Wouldn't it also just be faster to look at the box? I mean, just, just look at it. Just look at it. It's right there. The box tells you how long to cook it. I mean, from my experience, there's some foods that you don't just put in a microwave and it comes out. You know, you gotta like take it out after you heat it up and then you gotta stir it a little bit. Then you gotta put it back in. How would that work? How, how would you even know that you have to do that if you just scan a barcode? Come on, Microsoft. Come on, Susie. Next up, we see real cooking. This smart home has a, uh, a table and it's a table that can turn into a cookbook. Yep. I mean, this is a neat idea. I, obviously, again, we, we don't have any of this stuff, but you know, I guess if you're cooking and you, you don't want to have a phone or a, a monitor or you don't just know the recipe, it could appear on your on your table unless you're covering it up, you know, with the food you're cooking. That could suck. Those RFIDs are back again and this time holding information within your clothes. If I hold this T-shirt up to this mirror, it will tell me exactly how I should care and wash my clothes. Now, I guess that's, you know, that's cool. That's fine, whatever. But wouldn't it make more sense to put this in the in the laundry room? Why would you want to know how to clean your clothes if they're already clean? Because they're just you just put them out of the closet. It's right in front of the mirror. What's the point of that? Luckily, this isn't the only thing the smart mirror can do. It can identify what clothes you're holding and match it with whatever would look nice with it. I mean... <laughs> I don't know, like, I, I, does, we finally get to see Susie messing around with the big old Windows tablet of the, the future, but it's time for the big reveal of what this home can really do. Now, they hyped this up pretty big. I mean, I was kind of expecting, like, a, a 360 degree film that surrounds you with all the OLED walls or something like that, but no, that's not what we get. Start the story. Good night, moon. In the great green room, there was a telephone. And a red balloon. And a picture of the cow jumping over the moon. Isn't that just the best way to hear a bedtime story? You're wrong. But if Papas was in the bar that logically meant that every wobble battle, all the rest were bothered with the death. No, that's what if Papas was in the 